Hi, and welcome to Encouraging Word. You know, in the last week or so, uh, we have been traveling a bit, and we've been in a number of cities, Calgary, Edmonton, Saskatoon, and Winnipeg. And one of the things I've discovered about living in the city versus living in the country is that of waiting. You know, despite how fast and how heavy the traffic is in the city uh, and, and how fast you're going all the time, it seems like that you always have to wait, whether it's waiting at traffic lights or waiting in traffic jams, sometimes due to construction or just the heaviness of the traffic. There's always a lot of waiting. And when you get to where you want to go, you have to wait there too, be it at the grocery store, the theater, or whatever it is you're doing. It seems like you're always waiting there's so many people and there's so many people in line you know in the small town where I live we don't have any traffic lights and so there's very little waiting in traffic you can just go uh, probably the only time when you really have to wait is when four people arrive at the four-way traffic stop at the, or stop sign at the same time and you have to wait for the first one to go or the one on the right to go or whatever the rules are uh, that's about the only time you really have to wait in grocery stores or anything like that maybe you may have to wait for two or three minutes because there's a lineup but it goes pretty fast we really don't have to wait that much um, and maybe that's why people hate waiting. I know people hate waiting. Um, we live in an instant society where we want everything right now. Uh, that may be why in regards to spiritual things it's so difficult because we're often told in the scriptures that we have to wait. In the Old Testament, a prophet named Habakkuk was given a prophecy of things that were to come, but then he was told, though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. This is what's going to happen, but it's not going to happen today. you got to wait for it. Jesus told the disciples about a gift that he was giving them, the gift of the Holy Spirit, after he goes back to heaven. But he says, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised which he said, you've heard from me for John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. It's coming, but you have to wait for it. Of course, one of the best known verses is Isaiah 40 and verse 31 that says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, Abraham was promised to be a father with his wife Sarah of a child together. But uh, when the promise was not fulfilled in a timely manner according to their time, they went ahead another route and did things in their own way. Um, and today we still suffer the impact of, of what they did, the disobedience, and we still suffer that today. Sometimes in waiting, we tend to rush ahead of God. We want it right now. We don't want to wait. Uh, some of you today are waiting. You're waiting for perhaps a healing. Maybe you're waiting for some financial help, a uh, financial situation in your life. Maybe you're waiting for a family situation, the salvation of a loved one. You've been praying and praying and it just hasn't happened yet. And you continue to wait. That doesn't mean passively putting in time and, and, and just sitting around your feet up waiting, but it means continually trusting God, continually putting your faith in the Lord and knowing that when God is faithful and when his time comes, it'll happen. And sometimes it happens very quickly. Someone once said, God is never early. God is never late. He's always right on time. You know, all through the Bible, we read stories of men and women who had to wait for the promises of God to be fulfilled in their lives. So I want to encourage you, don't give up. Don't stop trusting him. Continue to be faithful to him, and he will be faithful to you. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, we are reminded, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Listen, God will keep his word. You need to believe that. You need to hang on to the promises and wait for God's timing to see them fulfilled.
Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that you love us. You have made many promises to us, and God, you encourage us to wait for your promises, to be faithful to you, even in times when it seems like the, the promises are a long time coming. Father, we want to be faithful to you. We pray even today for people who are waiting, and they're getting discouraged because they've had to wait for so long. Lord, I want to pray that uh, you will uh, minister to them strength and grace and, and hope, and God, in their waiting, they will not turn away away from you and turn aside from you, but God, they'll continue to look to you in faith and look to you with the hope of your word being fulfilled in their lives. We give you thanks for that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for taking time to watch uh, this encouraging word. Uh, comes to me, Dave. I'm in Killarney, Manitoba, and I'm so glad you've taken time to, to watch today. We want to give you a daily word of encouragement, so I encourage you. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another encouraging word. Have a great day. God bless.